So let's start up front. Let, let's start with the defensive line. And really, I would say over the last week and a half, last week, you know, my confidence level in the defensive line has, has only grown because right. of the guys that are coming back. <clears throat> and, you know, you've got Myron obviously heading to the NFL. You've got Kurt Heinish heading to the NFL. Expected, obviously. I mean, Kurt would be like a double doctor if he came back. So, I mean, he, it's time for him to go. Uh, and I mean that with all due respect, I love Kurt Heinish. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, if he had 10 years of eligibility, I'd keep him around. Um, but he did, he just completed his sixth year. So he's got to go. Um, and then Myron, I think he's ready to fifth year. Uh, is fifth it fifth? Year. I thought it was, see, it fifth feels year. like no. six. That's no. my fault. He, Cause he played all five years. Another yeah, day. Yeah, Cause he, he was part of the freshman. rotation as a true freshman. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But with the Adamiola brothers coming back, you know, uh, with Foskey coming back with the depth getting that much better. I mean, th- this is a championship level defensive line, in my opinion. I, I, I just, I don't see any other way now. I think that they can, there's still another level for them to get to, but they could be part of a championship defense if the other parts are as good. You know, if they can pick up their slack, I guess is the best way to put it. I like where the defensive line is. Well, and the thing is about the defensive line, and, and there's some aspects of it that we'll, we'll dive into is the, a defensive line can overcome and mask a lot of warts, True. which we saw this year to a degree. Absolutely. And we saw at times teams that were really good at throwing the football weren't able to throw on Notre Dame as effectively because they couldn't protect the quarterback. Well, and then we also saw that what happens when when they can't get to the quarterback, what happens? We saw that in the Fiesta Bowl, too. And and to me, that that obviously is a bit problematic. I, I think the defense was really good this year. I think it, the defensive line it was really good this year. I think it has the chance to be elite. Right. But it has it still has to play better. I think the talent is there. I think you're right. I think Isaiah Foskey's a – you know, has a chance to be a top 15 mm-hmm. NFL draft pick next year. I yes. think Jason Adam Mullock's got a chance to be a star. I think he was really good this year. You know, just Adam Mullock being a guy. I, I really like the – Riley Mills is a guy we project to move out to big end, and I think he's got a very bright future. Alexander Aaronsberg has come along. You've got two really good freshmen coming in and Tyson Ford and Aiden Gabera. The question is, at this point in time, Vince, is, okay, can you can you play like an elite group all – a little bit, maybe a little bit more convinc- consistently than they did this year. Sure. And one of those areas is that it's twofold. One of those areas is you've got to do a better job of finishing at the quarterback, which is mm-hmm. impressive to say when you consider how many sacks they had this year. They missed on too many sack opportunities. And number two, they do have to figure out a way to get better against the run. And I think the, if there's one concern I have about this D-line, and when we're talking concern, we're talking about whether or not it's going to be elite. It's going to be very good. Yeah. If whether it's elite, is they've got to figure out ways to be able to hold up better at teams that can run at them. And that is a concern that I have. When you look at Howard Cross and Jacob Lacey being 275 pound nose tackles, they've got to figure out ways with Aiden Kiana Ana, with Gabriel Rubio, to figure out ways to utilize those two bigger guys to be able to hold up better when teams are running at them. You you can't always just rely on your athleticism. Now, I also think the counter argument is you don't always need a 320 pound nose guard that that's right. not where they are right. either. I got to find that, find that happy medium. And it's going to be up to the staff to be able to develop Keanu Ana and Gabriel Rubio to a way where they can play big boy football when they need to, because, you know, they were able to out athlete Wisconsin. We, they couldn't do that against Oklahoma state. Sure. Right, because Oklahoma State was able to get the ball out quickly and and use quarterback scrambles and move the pocket and use sort of their athleticism against them because they would just kind of run outside of it, <clears throat> and that's where linebacker play has got to get better, which we'll get into. But I just really feel like that is the one concern that I have, and the reason I say that is is I I think of the defensive line and I think about them matched up against the two teams we saw on Saturday or Monday night. Sure. And I think about them having to play Georgia. You know, when Notre Dame went toe to toe at Georgia in 19 and 17, they had a little bit more beef, a little bit more, not a ton, but there were times when, you know, they were, they were able to out athlete those teams, but you can't always do that, especially in a national title game when you've got a month to basically kind of prepare for your playoff two playoff games. And I just feel like, they have to have the ability when it's needed to play big boy football. And and I 
I don't know if they've proven that enough because the run defense has been better, but still not good enough. That's the one part of the defense that I say, if you really talk about taking that next leap as a program, the run defense still has room to get better. Now, this year, it, there were stretches where it was brilliant, and there were stretches last year where it was brilliant. Because if you look at this year, for example, Vince, run defense-wise, they went a stretch of of three games in September where they held Cincinnati, Purdue, and Wisconsin under 100 yards. And they were pretty good on run defense in November, you know, spe- you know, holding Navy like 80 yards below their season average, then holding Stanford and Virginia to less than 100 yards. Georgia Tech only went for 128. But then there was the North Carolina game. There was the Oklahoma State game. There was the Florida State game. There, there still was a couple of those games. But I just feel like to really be a, an elite defense, they've just got to get a little better at stopping the run. I mean, look, Alabama and Georgia this year ranked second and fourth in rush defense. Yeah. yeah. And then Alabama had their moments where they could get beat in the run. We saw that against Georgia. But I just still feel like there's another level. Notre Dame ranked 37th there's still another level they need to get to when it comes to rush defense. And we saw the same thing last year, Vince, too, because, you know, last year the run defense at moments at times looked great. I mean, at times it looked really good. I mean, remember there was a stretch of six games in there against Louisville all the way down to North Carolina where they held opponents under 100 yards. Yeah. You know, and then you give up 200 against – two over 200 against Syracuse. You give up over 200 against Clemson. And – you know, you did well against Alabama with the exception of that one long run against Najee, but you just weren't able to make enough stops. And so I think to me, that's that's a big part of this, and it's going to come down to the D-line and the linebackers playing their role in it. So that's that's my one my one concern that I have with the D-line. The, the concern that I have is I think you could make it towards the entire defense, to be honest with you, mm-hmm. and maybe not just the defensive line, but – this is where I think it could start because I think the guys from the defensive line could bring this and then it would be infectious to the guys behind them. And it's just Mm -hmm. physicality. And there's no way to really quantitatively measure that per se, Mm -hmm. but it has to do with the run game. I mean, it has to do with finishing at the quarterback. It just, it feels like Notre Dame is a little bit more finesse than they are physical right now. And at times, and I want, I personally, Vince D'Addario, I want mm-hmm. physicality. I want – somebody mentioned it in the chat. Like, they want a mean streak, and and that – to a degree, I, I agree with that. Like, if you watched – if you watched the, you know, Georgia's defense play in the national championship, for example, mm-hmm. those guys met ball carriers with a streak of, you know, I'm going to run through this guy, and – you know what I mean? Like, it was just mm-hmm. a different type of defense – then a lot of other teams are playing. And and a lot of that comes from just swagger. A lot of that comes from physicality. A lot of that comes – I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can quantify that. Right. I just need to see that more from this defense. And I don't know if I would say that about the D-line, though. Uh, I think the D-line plays physical. I think the D-line – I mean, you don't see D-linemen arriving at the football with a lot of force. Because uh, they don't know, have the area to run right. up to it. I mean, they don't have the runway. And and the one thing I think they did, they've done a good job of, like you could say, Isaiah Foskey missed out on a bunch of, you know, kill shots when it comes to hitting quarterbacks. Why? Because he was taught to go for the ball, which is why he led the nation sure. in forced fumbles, right? I mean, so – I think that to me, Vince, that I agree with. And we talked a little bit about this yesterday in the show, but that to me is for another position group conversation. And when you look at the D line, I, I, I don't, I don't think like when I watch Jason Adam Yola, I don't think he lacks physicality. I don't think Isaiah Foskey lacks physicality, he, especially later in the year. He got better and better at setting the edge in the run game. I think that's an area he's got to get better and has still room to get better. I think in past years the defensive ends have been the strength of their of their run defense because they're so good at setting the edge. They got better this year. I think that's that needs to be something that they continue to get better at next sure. year as well. But to me, I think the D line, I think they do play with physicality. I just think because of the the lack of size and the fact that they play on on you know it's more about penetration and quickness. Right. It right. may not always look like it. I think where where we need to have a conversation about them being more physical is at other position groups. But when I look at the defensive defensive line, you know, obviously they need Foskey and they need Adam Yola to kind of have breakouts. They need right. I mean, like, yeah. and I'm talking about breakouts. I'm talking about like they were really good, but like I'm talking like best in the country at what you do. Yeah, breakouts. 
then they need sort of a traditional breakout from like a Riley Mills kind of guy, right? And so they've got some young guys that have been ascending that how they perform is ultimately going to determine it. And I go back to, you know, Riley Mills breaking out at big end with Alexander Aaronsberger. I really like that one-two punch. Nana being in that conversation as well, although he's more of a, to me, a rotation guy at this point in time. He's more of a guy that, you know, I think you can over-recruit, to be completely honest with you. Um, because he just doesn't bring a lot as a pass rusher. He's kind of a one-dimensional guy. I I still go back to what I said before, which is they need they need the young guys to really emerge. They need Keana Ana. They need Gabriel Rubio really to emerge because the one area that I'm a little concerned about the future is sort of the future of the interior because you just don't have a lot of young, once this guy leaves, this guy steps in type of, thing especially now that riley mills is going out to big end so i think that's probably from a recruiting standpoint i'm not saying you need to recruit a bunch of 300 pounders but they need to, they need to land a couple guys in this class that can be interior guys that project well and you know yeah well, they're, hit, they're hitting the ball out of the park with the edge guys i mean no question about it but you're right they need more they need more interior. I agree with that. And uh, hopefully that can manifest itself in recruiting, and et, et cetera, mm-hmm. moving forward. No doubt about that. I, I agree with that completely. But I think the top guys that they've got right now for 22, I think they're good to go, right? Mm-hmm. I, I think you're, you're just projecting into the future kind of. Yeah, like 2022. I, round. Well, 2022, I, I'm, I'm doing both. Okay. You know, the first time I talked about the need to play big boy football, that's for 2022. Sure. And you sure, got Ohio sure. State in the opener. You're going to have Clemson. You're going to have BYU. You're, you know, you're going to, you know, if you get into the postseason and playoff or whatever the case may be, um, you know, there, there's, you've got to be able to do that. But then for the future, so it's kind of a twofold type of approach at it. It's, it's the reason I bring it up is because we saw from the offensive line that, you know, for a while there, like the offensive line was just a machine. And, you have one or two bad classes or a coach leaves or whatever, or, you know, and then all of a sudden you lose it. My point simply is for Notre Dame to continue being a, to to be a championship football team, they can't afford a step back from the defensive line. And if anything, they need it to get even better is my point. So that's kind of where I'm getting to Vince is I think the defensive line heading into 2022 has a chance to be elite. There are some things that have to happen though, for that to happen. I don't think we should just admit, and I'm not saying you're doing this, we can't immediately discount the impact that Kurt Heinisch had. Oh yeah, and, and and from a leadership standpoint, and from a playmaking standpoint, and all that kind of stuff, and just assume that someone else is going to do it. Because if you look at Howard Cross, for example, his best games were games where he only played twenty to twenty-five snaps. The more snaps he played, the the less effective he was because he's two hundred seventy-five pound nose tackle. So you can't just say, well, plug Howard Cross into Kurt Heinis's role because Kurt Heinis was playing more snaps than that. Is Jacob Lacey going to be healthy? Can he hold up? Can he put back on another five or 10 pounds and be ready to go? He needed sure. to lose that weight to get healthy, but can he pack it back on? We don't know. And so that's why I say is when I look at, because what's this whole conversation about? Winning a championship. What does that mean? The road to a championship goes through Tuscaloosa and Athens and Columbus. For Notre Dame, quite literally next year, goes through Columbus. And to beat those teams, this is where they need to get to. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I'm coming from. So there are still, even with everything going on, there are still some things that we need need to find out about, about this whole thing. So 